Welcome to the Great Big Story Cupboard with love from Adventure Island and lots of love from Guess Who? That's right, Bonnie and Epi. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, it's Greg, and I'm here in the Adventure Attic today. And look what I've got. That's right, Thimble the Christmas Mouse has left the Magic Mustard Tin, and today she's left the number 10 on it. And do you know what? We've just got back from a walk, and Brahms a Robin was telling us that apparently he had seen Thimble the Christmas Mouse coming into the house today. Can't believe it. It's the first time that he's ever spotted her. To open up the magic mustard tin, we're going to need the passcode. And today's a really tricky one. We're going to have to count up all the way to 1,000 in 100s. Let's give it a go. Let's do it together and start on 100. So it goes like this, doesn't it? 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600... 700, 800, 900, 1000. Wow, let's see if it's opened up the magic mustard tin. Oh, yes, it did. Oh my goodness, look, yes. Oh, this is a really, really hard word. Now, in the middle, we've got two letters that make their E sound when they're together. So we know now that that's E. Let's see if we can read it. Creek. Creek. And do you know what? Stairs creak, don't they? When we go up the stairs, maybe go up to bed. When I was little, my mum used to call it the wooden hill. We'd go up the wooden hill to bed. And sometimes those stairs went creak, creak. Hey, can you make a creaking sound? You can. Do you know, trees creak in the wind sometimes. Maybe you've been out for a walk and it's been really windy and you can sometimes hear the boughs of the trees swaying in the wind, creaking. Do you know what else creaks? My knees. I'm getting old now and sometimes my knees creak when I'm walking around on an adventure ride. But don't tell Bonnie and Epi. Let's see what else we've got. <gasps> oh my goodness, a memory message. Oh, it's a word today. It's the word enormous. See if you can put that in your head. Enormous. It's another word for something that's really big. Enormous. Yeah, you got it in there? Yeah, tucked away in your brain? Enormous. Yes, okay, keep hold of that one. Let's see what else she's... Oh, look, Thimble's brought something for Brahms. Oh, yeah, yes. Energy balls. We can put these in the bird feeder so that Brahms can eat them. Perfect. Wow, what a brilliant gift that Thimble the Christmas Mouse has left for Brahms. He's not going to believe it. Hey, that's going to make him sing even more, isn't it? I wonder what else we've got in here. Let's see. Oh, a story dreaming message right at the bottom. Let's see if I can get that. Oh, it's a bit tricky. Right, I'll read it to you. A cat... Asleep in a box. A cat asleep in a box. Right, okay, so I've got to now picture. I've got going to picture the cat first. So I've got a cat. It's a ginger cat. It's quite furry. And he's curled up right at the bottom of an enormous box. I wonder how big your box is in your brain that you're story dreaming. Is it an enormous box or is it a tiny box? I wonder which one. But I do know that cats like to sleep in boxes, don't they? Can you see it in your head, your cat? I wonder what colour your cat is. It's 
really cool, isn't it? Story dreaming. And do you know what? There is actually a book called My Cat Likes to Sleep in Boxes. I wonder if you've read it before. If not, see if you can find it. It's really funny. Let's see what else we've got. <gasps> oh my goodness me! You're never going to believe your eyes! Look what Thimble the Christmas Mouse has left for Epi. Oh, it's a name tag for her black harness. Wow, isn't she really lucky? Gosh, I can't wait to put this on Epi's little black harness. Isn't she going to be the smartest little dog ever? She is, isn't she? Gosh, do you know what? Thimble is so kind. What a lovely gift that she's left for Epi. Let's see what else we've got. Oh, now. Oh, mm, a magic message from Thimble. Do you know what number that is? You do? That's right, it's the number 100. Now, I know exactly who this is for. This is for Bonnie. And I know when I go and give this to Bonnie, I know something really magic is going to happen. And do you know what? You're about to find out because once I've given it to her, you're going to be able to watch something straight from Bonnie. She story dreamed something for you. Would you like to see it? You would? Now, before we see it, I wonder if you can remember what the memory message was. It was a word and it meant something that was really big. Can you remember? You can? Okay, good. I've got a great idea. Let's count up in 100s again, all the way to 1000. And when we get to 1000, Bonnie's little message for you, the thing that she's got for you, will appear. Are you ready? 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000! Hooray for Bonnie and Epi by Greg Bottrell and William Gurney. It was a cold day, but Bonnie didn't mind because she was very keen to go out for a walk. Epi, on the other hand, definitely wasn't. She hid behind the sofa and hoped that no one would find her because all she wanted to do was stay in the warm and dry. Come on, Epi, said Bonnie. There'll be lots of great things to sniff outside and you never know, we might find some squirrels for you to chase. Now if it's only one thing that Epi loves more than being in the warm and dry, it is chasing squirrels. So out she came from behind the sofa and three, two, one, they were off! And because the best place to find great things to sniff and chase squirrels is in the woods, that's exactly where they went. There were lots of great sounds in the woods as they began to wander through them. Snap, rustle, crunch, tweet, snuffle, caw. Then Epi remembered to go and look for squirrels to chase. And Bonnie began to sniff. She hadn't sniffed far until she found something. It was a great big stripey sock. Bonnie gave it a sniff. Meanwhile, Epi was doing some careful listening for squirrels. All of a sudden, she heard something far off in the distance that certainly wasn't a squirrel. Stamp, stomp, stamp. So very quickly, she made her way to where Bonnie was sniffing. Bonnie, said Epi, but Bonnie had already gone off to see what else she could sniff. So Epi ran after her. And as she did, she sang a little song. Bibble, bobble, banjo, squirrels in a tree. Play the ukulele, one, two, three. Bonnie had found a great big straw boater hat and was giving it a sniff. Epi, however, thought she could hear something a little way off in the distance. Rumble, grumble, rumble. 
Bonnie, said Eppy, but Bonnie had already gone off to see what else she could sniff, so Eppy trotted after her. And as she did, she sang her little song. Bibble, bobble, banjo, squirrels in a tree, play the ukulele, one, two, three. Bonnie had found a great big sack, and of course she was giving it a good sniff. But Eppy thought she could hear something quite nearby. Roar! 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 Bonnie, said Eppy, but Bonnie had already gone off to see what else she could sniff. So Eppy scampered after her. And as she did, she sang her little song. Bibble, bobble, banjo, squirrels in a tree, play the ukulele, one, two, three. Bonnie had found stacks of great big golden coins, and yes, she was giving them a sniff. But Eppy thought she could hear something very, very close indeed. Fee, fi, fo, fum! Bonnie, said Eppy, but Bonnie had already gone off to see what else she could sniff. So Eppy very quickly raced after her. And as she did, she sang her little song. Bibble, bobble, banjo, squirrels in a tree, play the ukulele, one, two, three. Bonnie had found a pair of ginormous yellow boots and was just about to give them a sniff when they moved. Someone was wearing them. Bonnie looked up and saw who it was. A great, big, giant. Help! shouted both Bonnie and Eppy, and they were just about to turn and run as fast as their little legs would carry them when... The giant spoke in his great, big, booming voice. I've been looking for my great big stripy sock, my great big straw boater hat, my great big sack, and my great big stacks of golden coins everywhere, and you have just sniffed them all out for me, you clever, clever dogs. And with that, the giant leaned down and gave Bonnie and Eppy two great big bones to take home with them. With a fee fi fo fum he then stomped off through the woods, over the hill, and far away. So Bonnie and Eppy ran home. And when they got there, Eppy sat in the warm and dry, gnawing happily on her great big bone. Chomp, chomp, chomp. But Bonnie didn't, because while the giant was stomping away, she had buried her great big bone in the ground right there in the woods. So that next time she went out from the warm and dry, she would have something exciting to sniff for, and it might just lead her and Eppy on a great big adventure again. Something that a certain animal would be very happy to hear.